Hello everybody and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet and welcome to another episode of The Apostates. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today I'm here with uh, a guest that I have been wanting to speak to for quite a long time, but I didn't really have the opportunity to speak to him before. Uh, Mohammed Nafal, who, who has notoriously in Egypt become uh, known to the public on TV. To, to the rest of us, uh, he has become popular in a very nice way, especially to the uh, ex-Muslim community, to atheist activists and to activists who criticize Islam and who deal with, uh, with issues with free speech in the Muslim world. His appearance has also been a landmark for... Uh, for, for science in the Islamic world, especially in Egypt. But I, I don't want to talk uh, too much about him. I would like to let him speak. Hi, Mohammed. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you for having me in your show. It's a true pleasure and um, I really appreciate it. Well, I'm Mohammed. I am originally from Cairo. Um, I'm an atheist. I've left Islam when I was a teen. And I've studied engineering, I became an electrical engineer. And uh, in early 2018, I've actually appeared on TV and I went public with being an atheist in an attempt to neutralize uh, being an ex Muslim in Islamic countries. Uh, unfortunately, the consequences of that uh, was not so good. And later, I had to escape my country and um, travel to have sanctuary in the West. So what happened is that you were invited on a TV show in Egypt. Uh, you went on and you spoke about how you don't believe in God and how you uh, explain the origin of humans and of the planet in a scientific way. And then uh, you were kicked out for just that. And afterwards you had to flee. Yeah, basically. Okay, okay. Let's just look at the clip so that everyone uh, can see what exactly happened, what we are talking about. I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm not sure تمام <تصفيق> 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 ماشي في فرض في فرضيات ماشي هقول لحضرتك في فرضيات كتير بتفسر ان وجودنا هنا على الكوكب ده وفي فرضيات كتير بتفسر انا بسال انت ازاي بقيت بني ادم ازاي؟ ما ترد انت بقيت بني ادم ازاي؟ انت موجود ازاي في الكون ده؟ تمام طيب هقول لحضرتك في فرضيات بتحاول تفسر وجودنا تمام منها فرضيه ان ربنا خلقنا خلاص في فرضيات بقى ثانيه عليها ادله اكتر كتير زي مثلا نشاه الكون اللي هو البيج بانج تمام اللي هو انفجار العظيم بص يا انفجار العظيم اللي بيشاهدونا ناس انت بتتكلم في مصر والمواطنين بسطاء بيسمعونا كلمنا بالعربي بلاش المصطلحات اللي ملهاش لازمه هو المصطلحات بس سببها ان العلم ده كله اتعمل بالانجليزي ولما أنا واحد بيقرا انا علم انت بتكلمني عليه انت عندك حاله من الارتباك حاله من عدم الثقه بتتكلم ان انت بتنكر الاله بتنكر ربنا بتنكر الدين بتنكر كل الثوابت طب انت ايه سؤال صغير ليه دي حاجه وحشه لا طبعا حاجه وحشه انا انا فعلا بص اقول لك حاجه طبعاً. انت جاي بتتكلم في فكرك انت ما عندكش فكر انت وعليك. عندك الحاد عندك كفر ما ينفعش ان انا نخلي ده انا انا باسف جدا وبتاسف لمشاهديني ان يكون معايا شاب مصري بهذه الصفات انا اسف فعلا ان يكون معايا محمد انا مش هقدر اكمل معاك ولا تبقى موجود معانا في الحلقه للاسف لان فكرك لا يتناسب ما ينفعش ان احنا نروج لافكار افكار اصلا هدامه انت ما قلتش ولا كلمه من اول ما قعدنا مقنعه شوف حبيبي هي انت محتاج تتعالج نفسيا مرض نفسي بينتاب كثير من الشباب نتيجه لظروف معينه في اسرهم ظروف ماديه ظروف معنويه طب انا اخد بالك يا طب انت محمد فعلا زي ما بقول لك يا شيخ انت فعلا رحت لدكتور نفسي انا بنصحك على الهوا ان حضرتك تطلع من هنا دلوقتي على مستشفى الامراض العقليه تكشف عن نفسك انت ما ينفعش تكون موجود للاسف مش هقدر اكمل معاك ولا تبقى موجود معانا في الحلقه انا بستاذنك ان انت تفضل تقوم وانا هكمل حلقتي مع الدكتور محمود لان للاسف افكارك هدامه وضيع الشباب المصري وللاسف انت مثال سيء جدا للشباب المصري هنطلع لفاصل يا جماعه وهنضيفنا هيغادرنا وهكمل مع الدكتور محمود وانا اسف مره ثانيه المشاهدين لا انا اسف جدا ومره ثانيه ان يكون معايا مثل هذا الشخص انا اسف وبتاسف ثاني لجمهوري ان انا انا جايب شاب مصري جايب يتكلم في افكار للاسف ما عندوش اي حاجه مقنعه وما 
وما عندوش اي حاجه ممكن يقدمها وده مثال سيء للشباب المصري وهم مش كتير للاسف يا محمد انت ما ينفعش تكون موجود ونصيحتي انها تطلع لمستشفى الامراض العقليه So Mohammed um, what did you feel about this whole experience how did you feel while this was happening uh, during the show i felt like well i felt all different emotion i felt anger i felt fear i felt uh, everything however the dominant emotion was that i'm representing a minority that does not get a chance to express itself and i had to be a good representation to them and being a good representation is to actually serve the goal and the goal was to actually neutralize being an ex-muslim neutralize being an atheist and uh, the way i found that conversation is going uh, toward aggression and hostility uh, i didn't think that that was serving uh, this so my own hope was for him to calm down uh, so that we could continue uh, our conversation and maybe uh, i would be able to persuade him or other people who watches us uh, to accept us more and not to be hostile towards us but personally yeah i felt shock i felt fear of the consequences of things that will happen to me i felt um, yeah and the, the fact that you are already on tv it's, it's in itself normally is very nerve-wracking so yeah. um yeah having having to be in this situation uh, It was not so easy. Yeah. I really, I really yeah. admire you. I mean, it's a very courageous act. I can, I can honestly not imagine myself go on public TV in a country like Egypt and just, just sit there and calmly talk about, uh, about what I believe and 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 have this guy uh, yell at me. It must have taken a lot of courage for you to actually go there. Well, yeah, I have went with the mentality of sacrificing myself for the cause, actually. Um, growing up uh, in, in an Islamic country, seeing all the injustice that happens in the name of Allah or religion or whatever, um, yeah, it could make that, I guess. It could make people, drive people to do something that might seem um, self, uh, maybe defeating or something, but uh, it's totally worth it, I think. But the, the funny thing is, um, he he tell he told you. I mean, he he didn't he didn't ever let you speak. He didn't speak you more than like he didn't let you speak more than three sentences or two sentences. And then he even uh, he even ironically said that uh, that you didn't present anything convincing. That you didn't say any proper word that would that would convince anyone. And that's funny because he didn't even let you speak. So how could you present anything? But uh, what did you what did you expect? I mean, why why did they call you there anyways? Do you think they just called you there because they wanted to humiliate you or yeah during this period in the egyptian parliament there was some islamist members suggesting that uh they would make it uh, like they would suggest a harsher sentence for people who leave the religion and leave the islam uh, already there are uh, penalties in place for people who criticize the religion or heavenly religion as they say as abrahamic religions but uh, they wanted even to make that harsher so uh for this occasion i think this talk show uh wanted to maybe um host uh, atheist people and then defeat them in public and yeah that's that's how uh, i think they wanted It's to make an example you know so that other atheists would be afraid because previously to my show also there was that news of people who got arrested for uh criticizing uh, islam Uh, they were doing it, uh, I think they were mocking uh, religion or something, and uh, their uh, friends have uh, reported them to the authorities, and they got arrested, and I think they had a case against them. Um, so, yeah, there was some talking about, about it. Uh, thankfully, uh, the situation does not uh, got much worse uh, from a legal perspective after my show. However, uh, there was some incidents uh, of... Uh, Uh, atheist people who were kind of active um, in criticizing Islam and uh, who got actually in uh, mo- a lot of trouble. Um, after after my show, uh, I think on after this law and after those people who got uh, arrested, Shreed Gaber uh, is an Egyptian uh, blogger, he's an ex-Muslim, and he was being uh, very uh, popular uh, among uh, certain groups of people, uh, especially teens. And... Um, He managed uh, um, to have some influence. Unfortunately, Shreve uh, got uh, a prison sentence against him now. 
uh, it all started maybe after uh, after my appearance by months or so. Uh, other activists also who um, got uh, unfortunately uh, banned from leaving the country and basically maybe uh, if I may say they are living under national uh, national security control. They are cannot travel and uh, do the wrong move, put them behind bars or humiliate them. Every once in a while, uh, one of them gets falsely arrested and get humiliated a little, and then they send them back. As long as they are like under control, uh, they can survive, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There is not much people who are like this. It was only maybe. Chief Gather and uh, two other activists and, and me, people who actually done things on um, on Egyptian soil, you know, while they were in Egypt and got publicly known and famous and whatever. It's very few. What, were you active before before you uh, went on the show? How how, how did it happen? Uh, what, how were you invited on the show? Uh, did you already have a presence? Did you already were you already known as an activist uh, in a circle? How did that happen? No, not really. I usually kept to myself. I had kind of very introverted life. I only had like my studies, my work, my my, my thing, and I had a profile on Facebook, a very very low key profile. Um, uh, and uh, one day in a group, atheist group, like closed group for us, um, somebody saw, uh, said that there is a TV show searching for uh, somebody who is atheist to appear there, um, and uh, of course. Uh, um, it's it's not so big of a group because um, not many people are interested uh, in being an ex-Muslim activist out of, of course, the consequences okay. that, might, that they might suffer. And uh, even this small group, uh, people there were not enthusiastic uh, to appear in this show because it's uh, social suicide, prison is a consequence, is a possible consequence, travel bans, or false arrest, all the madness that would happen. Uh, people would lose their jobs, would lose their lives. Anyway, so based on that, they, they were not uh, interested. And actually, there was some of them uh, advocating against going there. However, I felt like sacrifices has to, uh, to be have to be made. And um, yeah, uh, and I felt maybe uh, it's an opportunity to represent the community and maybe uh, sway a little people uh, to uh, a little group of people to uh, maybe uh, take our side. And I think I achieved that with some success. Um, some of the most people who watched the, the, the show uh, have actually sympathized with my situation. Um, they only done that, of course, because they saw that I could go back to Islam and I did not get an opportunity to express myself fully. But I think, yeah, um, um, that was a good consequence. Some people, uh, some ACS people now uh, would tell me that yeah, after seeing you, uh, your show, I was a Muslim, but now uh, afterwards, you know, that thing got me thinking a little, and now I'm, I'm an atheist. So that's that's very good outcome. That's good. Right? That's good. That's good. Um, I mean, you, you didn't even you didn't even say anything anything inflammatory. You didn't. You were very calm. You were very very collected. You didn't uh, give any harsh responses. You didn't even. You didn't even express any criticism. I mean, you were just sitting there. Uh, this guy is uh, basically insulting. Both of them are insulting you. Both of them are telling you that you have uh, mental problems, that you have to go see a, see a psychiatrist, which is very funny because just just because you said that you uh, that you accept a more scientific approach of why we are alive and why we exist, and that you don't believe in God, and the the. Um, the the, the, the the religious uh, imam in front of you directly said that uh, since you don't accept the existence of God, that you must have mental issues, which is very ironic, very ironic. But the, the thing is, um, you know, in the West, we have seen a lot of issues where uh, where critics of Islam, where people who, who mocked Islam or people who mocked uh, the prophet, uh, that they were attacked. And uh, some people have come and said that this only happened because because those people engaged in mockery. But in your case, you didn't even do that. You didn't even say anything critical of Islam. You didn't offer any mockery, anything at all. You were just the most uh, respectful, the most calm person that you could be. And you were just there. You took everything that this that this guy said. 
you didn't even you didn't even uh, respond in anger and you just said i don't believe and uh let me explain i believe in the i believe that we uh that there are several theories like the big bang that, that, that's by the way one thing that i find very funny when you, when you talked about the big bang when you said that there's a theory of the big bang for example the host said uh speak speak arabic don't speak english you know we are you're speaking to simple people what what is what is big bang what science are you speaking about <laughs> is that well, a, I, is that a normal I, reaction yeah um i think if more i uh, actually everything i said in english i was translating in arabic and uh i i thought maybe if i introduced some um i don't know i believe that many people in the middle east have to learn english because uh, that's i think if i didn't learn english i wouldn't have left the islam because um a lot of information are being censored in Iran. A lot of a lot of things, a lot of philosophy, a lot of um, things that is crucial for people to to get to know. And um, so I think English is very important to learn. It's the language of science. It's uh, every uh, all the interesting research, interesting uh, thinkers. Is everything is either in English or translated to English. So um, it's, it would be very educational if people from a developed country learn more English. However, of course. The bad, uh, the bad part of it is that you, you would have people who are advocating for very regressive values who can actually have good access to the West through internet. And that is also a little problematic uh, because some people get influenced. Uh, for instance, here um, in Germany, uh, you might find uh, a girl falling in love with a Muslim person and then wearing hijab. And then like having uh, many of them, at least not all, but many uh, would describe that this is the, well, the worst part of their life. So having people uh, like have these people, they have access to the culture. It could be it could be bad, but I I always hope that uh, Western people would have maybe maybe more confidence in their culture and in their history and then in like values of enlightenment, and that might hopefully uh, make make uh, make them have good effect maybe on on this culture. I totally agree with that. I often think that that uh, that that if Middle Eastern cultures, even even uh, my country, which is Turkey, for example, uh, if if these cultures are more exposed to to different languages, especially to English, which is the language that most of the world uh, converses in uh, online internationally, then uh, th this is definitely a big step toward being more enlightened, toward uh, learning more about about the world, learning more about different cultures. Just learning more about 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 reality and about science, and uh, it it is definitely a step toward uh, toward progress, toward uh, the progress of their own civilizations that they learn English, which is why I think it is very important, and why I uh, would love to see more 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 effort put toward uh, teaching these people to speak different languages because that, that really helps. I mean, I, when I look back and I compare people who don't speak English to people who who are, are ready to speak English, I see that there is a vast difference between those two people, between how open-minded uh, open the one side is compared to the, compared to the other. I completely agree, agree with that. Um, yeah, uh, I would like to comment on the agitation. Uh, you were asking about, oh, why they are so uh, agitated while you're being so nice and calm. Uh, and I think it's mostly like people in, uh, in my country and in many uh, other Islam countries, they build their life around religion. It's how they get their uh, comfort, their social status, the, it's everything. So taking away religion would be, uh, you would crumble their, their whole world in a way. So that would explain why they get so defensive. Yeah. It's not usual uh, f uh, in in my country uh, or uh, in other maybe Islam countries to have people criticizing uh, religion on, on TVs and to get access to this sort of people. Uh, however, like internet is very interesting, but internet is mostly you find like big bubbles in the internet. So um, yeah. People who think alike maybe attract and uh, they watch each other and they are. So there is that fa factor of confirmation bias. Uh -huh. When you get out of your bubble and jump in another bubble or more public sphere, uh, it gets it gets very um, it gets very maybe different. Uh, it could be very confrontational and problematic, I guess. Yeah, well, Muslim societies are also very, very uh, chauvinistic about what they believe in. Um, very many people in the West do not really fully understand uh, 
understand it when we try to explain that in in Muslim societies you cannot really properly voice your opinions. Uh, they don't understand that because um, they tend to compare that to, to to Western society. I believe you are in Germany right now, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah, you are in Germany. In in Germany, for example, it is completely normal to be in, to be an atheist. Uh, it is completely normal. No one even makes it, no no one even no one even wants to. Uh, wants to discuss that no one even wants to talk about it. i mean if you say that you're an atheist no one really cares you know everyone is like so so what you know but um it's 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 well, not I'm even people care don't care however there are uh, very uh, interesting uh, christian activists missionaries around especially for people who are refugees and asylum seekers they attract to us and they tend to try to um uh, persuade us to Definitely. be maybe christian Definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, but compare that to the to the Muslim world. I mean, he, he, here you have some Christians who think, yeah. or think, come to Jesus, believe in Jesus, and then you go to, you go into the Muslim world and you cannot even talk about about anything. You cannot even voice your opinion because you are afraid of being. The important part of it is that they are not political, because mm -hmm. Islam has political aspect. Christian in here yeah, yeah. Who, who say, "Now we want a secular world. We want it to be secular. We don't want to govern." So that is the most important part of it. And yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, that's that's a different. That, that is something that I talk about very often. Now, some people, uh, I think it is. I think it is pretty clear. But uh, I think this is a very important aspect that needs to be understood in order to understand why Islam is so different and why we have an issue with Islam. That Islam is a a completely political system. It is not just a a personal religion where you have a personal relationship between between the believer and God. Uh, it, it is it is completely political from from head to toe political. It is um, I, I'm I'm currently working on on a project actually where I compare how how the Christian uh, how Christian history was different from Islamic history, whereas uh, Christian. Christian people and Christian nations, for example, adhered to the belief in God, and they just were Christians. The Islamic world was not like that. The Islamic world was uh, directly led by Islam. The Islamic world was an Islamic empire. So uh, the head of religion in Islam was not just was not just the head of religion. The head the head of religion was also the head of the state and the head of the military, the head of the entire army. So army state and religion are all one body in islam while in other religions like in christianity that is that is separate christians today for example um for example don't wish to be don't wish to have a have a have a have a theocracy they they, they never they never properly wished to have one single body that that uh, manages religion military and state while in islam that is a fundamental part of the religion it's not something that people made up it is part of the religion that's how muhammad led the religion for example and that is how people uh, still are people still think that uh, that islam that religion that uh, islamic fundamentalism should be um, part of politics that is where politics should come from that is what everyone's life must be based on that is what the rules must be based on and if you are suddenly a dissenter if you suddenly say i don't believe in this and i believe that there are uh, scientific theories that explain our origins and where we will and what, what will happen to us when we die then uh that is not just that is not just a different opinion to these people to muslims it's directly it is it is directly uh dangerous it is directly an un unwelcomed dangerous idea that they think would uh, separate society in a, in a violent way and they have to stop this which is why they get so angry when they hear someone say that they are that, that they are an atheist i mean i was in turkey for example and uh e even in turkey just expressing that you are an atheist we, and turkey is a fairly secular country compared to compared to to to, to the others also to egypt for example even even there you get into you, you can get into a lot of trouble by just saying that you don't believe in god that you don't believe in in, in allah so um people really need to understand that but uh back to you moment how, uh, how did it happen that you uh stopped believing in islam or, or were you a muslim at some point and you stopped believing how exactly is your backstory with Atheism it's a story for me. It's a very interesting story. It all starts since I was a child. I've grown up in a kind of um, uh, Islamic uh, country, uh, Islamic family that cares about teaching me Quran, that cared about me going to the mosque. Uh, maybe when I was six, since I was six, I would go to a school to teach me how to properly read and understand Quran. Uh, I would go to the mosque maybe multiple times a day. And um, yeah, I had I had a lot of Islam in my child in my childhood, and then 
When I was eight, I started to have my doubts because uh, I think a lot of religion and um, it's normal maybe to start to have questions. And then some questions are not really permitted. Okay, so I kept it to myself. And the little by little, I found myself becoming agnostic. I was like, okay, how about maybe he lied? Adult people lie. I was eight back then. So adult people could lie. Um, why Why I should believe that Muhammad never lied? Why I should believe that he's not? Uh, maybe he lied to everyone. Uh, and I started to think this way until I actually became an agnostic. However, I kept it to myself because I didn't want to uh, have like any sort of punishment or uh, being grounded or whatever. And keeping to keeping it to myself means that I'll have to do all the Islamic activities, going to the mosque, going to yeah. Islamic school, to everything. One day I was I was at Friday prayers. Uh, it's like an equivalent of Sunday prayers for Christians. And um, the Imam back then was talking, was preaching, and was talking about okay, anything you ask Allah for before dawn, uh, Allah will answer answer that. Allah will give you that. So I was like, okay, this is a cool experiment. And I went uh, I went home, I slept, I waked up right before dawn, and I was like, Allah, if you are really there, please make my math teacher be absent tomorrow because I didn't finish her home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I went next day to school and I found out uh, that my math teacher actually resigned. And we spent two weeks without a math teacher. Unfortunately, I fall a victim for logical fallacies and false premise. And uh, I said, I went back to Islam and I spent my teens as being a very strict Muslim. Um, like I would say maybe when, when I was a teenager, if I had an opportunity, I would have maybe joined Al-Qaeda or whatever. Like I used to fantasize about dying in the name of Allah. Um, yeah, and that's how, what, what religion could do to someone. Um, anyways, uh, when when I became, uh, in my late teens, I started to learn English and I started to be more open to the Western culture and Western philosophy, Western science. And a little by little, I started to realize that uh, my Islam cannot really be uh, true. And religion, Abrahamic religion generally, cannot be real. And it's full of logical fallacies and mistakes. and. And I became an atheist. Uh, of course, also I've kept that to myself, and I had like a normal life, uh, doing all the Islam rituals normally, uh, until of course uh, I started to uh, meet in real life some like-minded people who also um, not Muslims left the Islam, and I would like to sh uh, to mention how significant is that. How significant it is to meet someone in this environment who thinks like you. It's it's not easy, and it's very valuable because you find Islam everywhere. It's on everybody's behavior. It's in everybody's um, mind. How people react, how people think, how people behave. It's like you see the the, the stamp or the uh, traces of religion in in the culture everywhere. You would be walking. Uh, on the street, you would find the uh, Quran everywhere. You would find uh, bumper stickers uh, talking about uh, um, La ilaha illallah, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So you you would hear azan five times a day. Of course, you're in Turkey, you have that. So Islam is literally everywhere, and its manifestation is everywhere, uh, whether in uh, real world, whether in work, whether in school. So um, it's very, very valuable to find a like-minded person. Uh, and uh, I found them, I fell in love with them, and I had a community, had a nice one. And I felt like maybe uh, they deserve uh, a chance. Like as we as ex-Muslims or atheists deserve a chance. Um, Egypt have uh, been always uh, either in the hands of uh, Islamists, like pure Islamists, people who are more conservative Egyptians uh, who might not really have an Islamic agenda, but they are Muslims and they partially force uh, or enforce uh, Islam uh, and Islam, some Islamic laws, especially when it comes to personal status laws. Um, 
and maybe maybe we should have had like maybe maybe we should have a chance maybe uh, we uh, could do some changes we could make this society a better a better place uh, you find the manifestation of the uh, negative effects of uh, of uh, religion in my country everywhere uh, you would look at women uh, and you would find like uh, violence against them uh, literacy uh, all of that uh, and it's all drawn from from that. Uh, of course, culture culture has to do something with it, but the, the culture and religion are infused together. They are like kind of. It's sometimes it's really hard to, to separate them, because you would ask someone, okay, why you beat your wife? Maybe you shouldn't, and then you would like, but Allah told me to do so. Yeah, yes. What to do with that? Well, of course, injustice against LGBT people against. Uh, is, is terrible. Uh, Islamic countries are definitely the worst uh, place for someone to be not heterosexual. Yeah, um, yeah uh, the economy, for instance. Um, in my country, you'd find people having children, a lot of children, uh, and uh, the government cannot really give them good education or good health care. Uh, because there are too many people, and uh, when you ask them, okay, maybe you should not do that, and then you uh, you be responded by, uh, Allah will do the planning, Allah will will give them, Allah will provide, uh, and of course uh, that uh, Islamic uh, hadith where Muhammad was talking about uh, how you should procreate as much as possible, and uh, that is a good virtue. Yeah. 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 All of that are infused in the culture and affecting the behavior of people. And whenever you try to change things, you would get bumped with that with that my way of thinking, with that ideologies, and with all of that. So it's really having devastating uh, effects on almost all aspects of life uh, because the intensity is very high. I came here and I don't see a lot of manifestation of religion. Uh, for instance, in, uh, in my ID, I have my religion. I have religion written in my ID. And that maybe that doesn't happen here, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it has a legal aspect and it has societal aspect and it's too much. It's really too much and it has to stop. For this part of the world to become a better place, uh, religion needs to be replaced maybe gradually with better philosophies and better ideologies, humanism, uh, Whatever, but just this this model is failing and it doesn't really work well. We we have a we have a history in the last uh, century of many countries, including Egypt actually, and including uh, including Turkey and other countries. Uh, they were on a path of becoming more more enlightened, more secular, more open minded, and it was it was kind of going that way until until recently, in the last half century, again people started falling back into into the hands of of of, of traditionalist conservative Islam. And um, the Islamist parts of the population tried to, uh, started to started to regain uh, the, the the power and also the the the, the voice the, the major voice in the public. Uh, the same thing also happened happened in Egypt. Um, it's the Islamic awakening. Uh, yeah. Where, like yeah, most plenty of Muslim people are like okay, we don't need secularism anymore. Islam is the answer. Islam is the solution. And they had uh, a lot of success, actually, unfortunately. And they had uh, support to sometimes from governments, and uh, sometimes they became the government, like what happened in Iran. And uh, uh, Saudi Arabia had that oil money and started to spreading their uh, very uh, devastating ideology all over North Africa. Um, yeah, it's uh, and before that, I think it was uh, Western people uh, occupying and having colonies uh, around in the Middle East and around Africa, uh, and maybe that uh, could explain why there was some le uh, leaning uh, toward secularism. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But they left, and I think they took yeah. that was and they left a mess behind. You know. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, uh, many people who think that there is a, that there is a, um, an Islamic awakening, an, an Islamic resurgence going on in the Middle East, uh, think that people are becoming more Islamic and more Islamist. That's actually not, not completely true. That would be a very pessimistic view. Uh, and, and if that was true, that would be, uh, that would kind of, 
that wouldn't be very great but it's, it's actually not really that way what what really happened is that is that um as a result of the west basically uh disarming and uh you know this dissolving the islamic empire of the of the middle east and the islamic dominance of the middle east and establishing colonies and uh bringing more secular forces more secular laws into power uh many of the many of the muslim countries just uh it were made secular either by outer forces either by by the west or by by forces inside that were uh, that favored the west or that were favored by the west or that were favored by their own people as 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 saviors such as in turkey for example in turkey uh ataturk was for example um the the secularist uh, hero of turkey who after the ottoman empire collapsed uh, re-established turkey and thought uh, we have to get rid of this backward system of islam and have to establish secularism because because secularism is what uh, is, is the future, and th these people set up these countries and set up these new systems, these new laws. But um, what happened there is that uh, while secularists were making the laws and while secularists were leading the country into a a better future, they were they were they were uh, they were doing that while the while the radical people, while those people who are into religion were staying low and sitting and just and, and and still existing in the country those people didn't just go away people didn't just become less religious the religious population was just in a corner and they were not in power and after a while after uh, after the west left uh, those religious people started started uh, assembling again, and started organizing again, and started working together and uh, and off and being more active in politics. And eventually, they started taking over again. So people didn't become more religious. The religious parts of the population just started becoming uh, more active in politics and more powerful. The same happened. Uh, in, in Egypt, in in Iran, uh, in in so many Middle Eastern countries, even in Turkey, in in many countries, it happens. It happened the same way. But uh, I would always hope for the future that uh, I I even think it is already happening right now that people understand that it was a giant mistake to let go of uh, of of the secularization of their countries and that they will eventually uh, get sick of how. Uh, of, of political Islam and return again to a path of of secularism and enlightenment. It has, I mean, p the people of Iran are are very sick of uh, of what they have brought on themselves. For example, people of Iran are, are sick of the of the Islamic regime. People of of Turkey are increasingly sick of of what of of political Islam that dominates their country. I think in Egypt, in Egypt, we have seen during the during during the the the, the Arab Spring how uh, how how after political Islamists, how the Muslim Brotherhood came into power and started to started to started to implement uh, laws that were just ridiculous, and 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 nobody stood a chance uh, against the Islamic. Uh... People back then, like it was actually a period of democracy, and people were allowed to express themselves, and nobody st stood a chance. Uh, no secular person stood a chance against the Islamists back then, mm -hmm. uh, and it it required a military coup to to, to take them down. Yeah, um, yeah I I understand, uh, of course, and with the internet, you could you could have the, the opportunity or the chance to actually change people because I know I believe. That these countries uh, or people, countries in the Middle East have never really became secular. It only maybe had some secular governments or secular yeah. appearance, but from deep inside, everybody had religion in their heart and believed in Allah and believed in whatever. And that is a way where uh, extremists could go to them and make it uh, make it, make it work to their favor. Mm -hmm. For instance, in my country in Egypt, you would have religion being uh, a mandatory subject in schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd have an Azhar, it's a uh, kind, of, kind of governmental organization, and it's very active at spreading uh, Sunni Islam and representing Sunni Islam in, in Egypt. It's supported by the government. Uh, they, are, they control mosques, they control, uh, they have a radio channel, very popular radio channel. Uh, they control talk shows that talks about Islam. So generally, uh, they, they plant the seeds, if I may say, the seeds of extremism, if I may say. Because, like, yeah, they say we are moderates, but being moderate is, is actually also could lead to extremism, as we have seen yeah, that yeah. happening. 
at the end of the day, like, you find uh, terrorists coming out of houses of moderates. Yeah. Just uh, you read the Quran, you just need to read the Quran, and you'd see the verses talking about violence and whatever, and nobody's really repairing that. Because it, it, if you speak Arabic, especially if you speak Arabic, because maybe some people would read the Quran and not understand, or, and sometimes the translation of the Quran is really not accurate. It's really hard to translate it. And for, um, it's easier for Arabic speakers to understand it. Sometimes uh, when they translate it, they make it more nicer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but um, yeah. So you would find that verse that that's uh, encouraging war. You would find that verse that doing whatever. And uh, it's really high. Uh, and nobody uh, is really doing a um, true true effort to repair that to change this image. You know. So you'd always have that uh, that window, a uh, little window for extremists or for people who are uh, could grab the whole region to back to Islamic uh, Islamic eras or uh, under Islamic control, and uh, yeah, that's that's a problem. That's why it's much better to be an atheist because you definitely closes the door. However, I think politician is not really supporting us, unfortunately. Uh, maybe because they, in a way or another, benefit from religion or because they want to avoid any conflict or, or clash, uh, maybe want it to happen naturally. But unfortunately, we don't get enough enough support as we need to, as it's supposed to happen. Um, maybe in the West, uh, it's different, but in the Middle East, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh, one one thing that I want to that I want to say about the whole um, how how extremists come out of moderate moderate uh, places or moderate households is I, I I talked recently with with Yasmin Mohammed about the same issue. Um, it it is it is if you grow up as a Muslim if you grow up in a Muslim family and uh, a Muslim family is compared to a Western family even the the average family is very religious compared to an average Western family we are uh, Muslim families are very religious people even if they are moderate Muslims they are still often very religious and um, if you grow up in such a household you learn basically from childhood that uh, that you learn about Islamic the Islamic warriors you learn about the brave warriors of Islam of how how the how the early Muslims were so brave and they would fight the 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 the, 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 the pagans the polytheists the infidels and the Christians and the Jews you learn about how glorious and how 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 amazing that was you know how you should be proud of that and how you should uh, look up to that and you know, as a result of that it is completely normal that that even the most moderate people especially if 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 moderate muslims are are sinful people if they think i'm not fully i'm not, i'm not a good enough muslim if if, so, if if such a person has already learned all their lives that uh that the Islamic warriors were brave and that they fought and died for Allah, then such, such a person can very easily come to the conclusion, uh, I'm not a good Muslim, but maybe I can fight and die for Allah, just like, just like the early Muslims did, just like the companions of, of the Holy Prophet did, just like, just, just like, uh, Salah ad-Din Ayyubi or like, or like this and that, just like all those people did. I mean, you, you grow up with a glorification of war and Islamic jihad all the time. No wonder. Uh, Islamic extremism doesn't co just come out of of extremist families that interpret Islam the wrong way. Such a thing is very rare. Islam uh, extremism comes out of of the most moderate households that you can imagine. It just happens that way. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, this is the situation. It's not so good because Islam, especially, uh, corrupts your sense of morality. Yes, uh, you have that that Muhammad is a perfect person in the world. He's like he's faultless, flawless, a perfect example of morality. And then you see what he what he has done. He has done wars, uh, sex slaves, uh, whatever. It just it's, he's not. He wasn't really a nice guy. He wasn't he uh, a good all. example to anyone. He wasn't a good example to anyone. Uh, yeah, marrying a child, whatever. It's disgusting. It's really disgusting. And he, the problem he, he was the guy who would who would uh, who would take his bodyguards and let them beat up a person because he did something wrong. That that, that was who Muhammad was. That is that is not someone that you would respect today if you saw him today. <laughs> exactly. And and uh, in a way or another, it really corrupts people's sense of morality to see that as moral and as perfect. So that then you might expect some corrupt behavior from these people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember growing up, maybe it's different now, but growing up, uh, they would uh, talk about the stories of the Sahaba or Muhammad followers, and they would be uh, saying uh, how, how it's great to, to die in the name of Allah. Yes. 
how how that glory how we shouldn't be sad about it i really remember and those those people who were talking they are were leading the moderate uh moderate uh, islamic movement in uh, in egypt or whatever and uh, they would talk about crazy stuff and now i see it crazy back then i thought okay wow that's amazing i would like to be like them maybe also i, would, I, I know would well, you, you don't understand back then that that, that is that, that is something that, that is crazy that's unacceptable that it's violent you don't really understand that when you are a muslim that appears completely normal completely honorable to you and when when other people point out that there is something aggressive and violent about islam you think what are you talking about you know it's it's islam islam is just honorable and peaceful while you are glorif glorifying war you don't really understand that until you start doubting and and leaving islam um in the West, to be honest, I, I didn't have a lot of exposure to uh, Western Muslims. However, uh, I think they also, given the language, call themselves Muslims without really understanding. It's good not to understand it. However, the problem uh, is that because it's bad, why would you want to understand something that would corrupt your behavior? But with future, uh, with the future, they might uh, they might uh, learn more and more and more, and you don't really know what could happen. It it was like mind blowing for me to see uh, Western people actually Western people who who born in a normal uh, maybe uh, atheist or uh, Christian house they would go and join ISIS for instance. Like, this is freaking crazy. Like how has that happened? Uh, so yeah, uh, it's it's a very problematic situation and. Um, I hope by that by the things that we do, uh, maybe doing activism, raising awareness about the, these problems in English, nobody would consider entering Islam. And hopefully, uh, English speakers who are watching us, maybe hopefully they will leave Islam. Hopefully, um, hopefully. yeah. I would, I would like to say. Um... You said earlier that 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 uh, there are some of us, there are atheists, there are people who doubt uh, Islam, who leave Islam, but we don't have much support from um, from people in power, from our governments, or from people who have bigger audiences in this in the in the Muslim world, and and that is sad. But I would think I would say I actually take pride in something here, which is that uh, you and I and many many like us, many uh, atheists, many uh, ex-Muslims, many people who who talk about these things actively and openly who are activists who uh who talk about open-mindedness who talk about uh differences in opinions who want to respectfully uh present our position or disrespectfully if it matters um we we are we are at the beginning of, of an enlightenment of the muslim world we are at, we, we are the first people who are at the beginning of an enlightenment that is that is supposed to happen, that is bound to happen in the Islamic world. We are at the beginning of it. You and I are at the beginning of it. Many others like like Sherif Kabir and uh, Armin Navabi and, and all the others, we are at the beginning of this. And we, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say we have a duty. Uh, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, uh, feel forced. But uh it is almost like we have a duty and it is an honorable duty to to go out there and to to make a beginning and to open the way to open the path to so many other people who are who are quiet and who are who are waiting for for someone to speak up who are afraid who don't know who to speak to because uh because they think they are alone they think they think they would be rejected they would be hated they would be persecuted or or punished or even killed and we we are here to to open the path for those people and that's an honorable wonderful thing when to we, it just gives me hope to go further and to to speak more and more and, and by the way i think you are a great voice i think you are uh, a fantastic speaker for the for this cause i think you are uh, you represent this cause in, in a great way i think your your, your appear, appearance on tv and the way you express your thoughts uh, are wonderful and I, I, I feel honored to have you on board as well as someone who wants to enlighten the Muslim world and the Islamic world. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually uh, great. Uh, I feel more an obligation to do it. I feel like um, I have that obligation for it. Sometimes it's pressure, sometimes it's risky, sometimes. But uh, yeah, somebody has to do it. Like somebody has uh, have to do that, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm willing to sacrifice myself for it. Um, even here in Germany, you would have some risks for that. Yes. For instance, there are I have friends and there are people who are ex-Muslims who are loud about criticizing religion and mocking it, and uh, they get in trouble. 
uh, and sometimes the, here the police uh, dedicate personnel to say, to protect them and to keep them safe. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not also uh, risk free in here. Uh, for instance, I uh, week and half ago, um, I got assaulted in the home uh, in the house that I was uh, staying in. Um, basically, some some of the guys stumbled upon my activism online, and he uh, didn't really like it. And the tension kept building um, until I got assaulted, and I had to. Um, leave the house that I was in and um, went to another house. Uh, to, to, get, to give uh, some background, I live in a house where uh, many other people coming seeking uh, protection or refugee in Germany live. Um, and uh, you would find a lot of Muslim people, a lot of Arab people uh, in these places. Uh, and uh, sometimes it could be risky. Uh -huh. um, However, yeah, um, actually I have made some things, um, after that I've made some things uh, private uh, on my wall, on my Facebook. However, uh, I'm planning to get it back again, hopefully, and maybe even have a show and uh, talk uh, more uh, about all these uh, issues of religion and uh, freedom, um, freedom and the human rights situation in the Middle East and the violations that happens out of uh, Islam and out of applying religion. Um, it, yeah. it is a, it is a shame that it is that it is uh, that it's risky that it's dangerous to even go out there and to to simply share your opinion to just to just say I don't believe in this and I don't believe in this because of A B and C because of one two and three it is it is I mean I would take 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 care of yourself we should all take care of ourselves and I I hope I hope we can I hope we can uh, provide I hope, I hope we can live in a better world and we can enlighten more more people who who think that you should be put in danger just because you think a certain way and we we really need more and more people to understand that this is really the way it looks people in the west often don't understand why often often don't understand why this is dangerous and uh and and that and that uh that people in the islamic world would react uh in 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 such ways just to us voicing our opinions but this is really uh the way it is and we need more awareness we need more enlightenment we need more help um but hey you, i think i think you're doing you're doing very well I, i'm i'm totally in support of you i think you're a great voice uh and i hope i hope you keep going on and take care of yourself and i, f I really feel 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 honored to have to have you as an as an ally here Mohammed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's really appreciated. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we are almost at the end of our talk. Is there anything else you want to add? Anything you want the world to know? Anything you want people to know? Mm, nothing in particular. Uh, do you have still any questions? Uh, how how long uh, um, is it? Oh, yeah, it's an hour actually. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have, we have quite. Time flies! Oh my god! I know. <laughs> Whoa! I, was, I was, I felt like maybe there is a half an hour remaining or something. Oh, okay. No, it's 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 been it's been quite a while. We had we had a very interesting talk. So. <laughs> yeah, thank, you. thank you for that. I truly appreciate it. Like that's amazing. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you, Mohammed, again for for being here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for sharing your opinions. I value them very much. Um, thanks everyone for for watching, and I would say stay away from Islam. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. It's an honor and a pleasure. You're an amazing person, and keep it up. It's just amazing. Your work is fascinating, and I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you for having me on your show. I truly you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's it's thank an honor. Thank you. Thanks everyone, and have a good day. Stay away from Islam.